Hallelujah! Indeed, friends, all glory, honor, and praises be unto God. And I am so excited to welcome each of you to this day one of special revival meeting with Reverend John Titus. And today, friends, it's a very significant day in the history of our church. It's a milestone for all of us at TOC Nusa Central. 12th May 2020 marks exactly one year anniversary of our formation as an independent church. திருச்சபையாகிக்கப்பட்டு ஒரு ஆண்டு நிறைவாகிறது இந்த கிருபையை இந்த நாளில் தேவ மனுஷன் மலை திரு ஜான் டைட்டஸோடு நாம் கொண்டாட இருக்கிறோம் இந்த ஆராதனையில் நாம் தேவனை ஆராதிக்க போகிறோம் தேவனுடைய வார்த்தைக்கு செவி சாய்க்க போகிறோம் அதற்கு பின்பாக தலைகளை தாழ்த்தி கண்களை மூடி நாம் ஜபிப்போம் லெட்ஸ் லுக் டு காட் இன் ப்ரே அஸ் வி மூவ் ஆன் இன் டு திஸ் வர்ஷிப் சர்வீஸ் ஃபாதர் வி வாண்ட் பிளஸ் யோர் நேம் அண்ட் தேங்க் யூ ஃபார் திஸ் பியூட்டிஃபுல் ஒன் இயர் தென் யூ ஹவ் டேக்கன் அஸ் ட்ரூ பிதாவே கடந்த ஒரு ஆண்டு காலங்கள் உங்களுடைய கிருபையினால் எங்களை சுமந்து வந்தீரே அதற்காக நன்றி இந்நாளில கூட உங்களுடைய தேவ மனுஷரை கொண்டு உங்களுடைய வார்த்தையை அனுப்பி என்ன நடுவில் பேசுவீராக வி ஆஸ்க் ஆஃப் யூ லார்ட் டு ஸ்பீக் டு அஸ் ட்ரூ யோர் செவன் சென் ஃபார் யோர் வேர்ட் அண்ட் மினிஸ்டர் டு அஸ் லார்ட் வி ஈகலி அவேட்ஸ் ஃபார் யோர் வேர்ட் உங்களுடைய வார்த்தைக்கு ஆவலோடு காத்திருக்கிறோம் இந்த ஆராதனை உங்களுடைய பிரசனத்தினால் அலங்கரியும் கம் அண்ட் பியூட்டிஃபை இஸ் சர்வீஸ் பை அ பியூட்டிஃபுல் ப்ரெசன்ஸ் அண்ட் ரிவைவ் அஸ் ரிவைவ் அஸ் ஃப்ரம் வித் இன் எங்கள் உள்ளான மனிதனை ஒரு எழுப்புதலுக்குள்ளாக நீ நடத்துவீராக தேவன் இஸ்ரோவேல்களின் துதிகளின் மத்தியில வாசம் செய்கிற தேவன் நீர் எங்களுடைய தேவன் ஓ உமை நாங்கள் ஆராதிக்கிறோம் பரிசுத்தர் 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 இஸ்ரோவேலின் துதிகளில் வாசம் செய்கிற எங்கள் தேவன்
Kirigal Devan. Lord, you are our God. We are more than victors when we are in you, Lord.
is our Savior and our Lord. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my share. Swami, Parisutta, 
ஈடற்றவர் இணையற்றவர் யூ ஆர் சிம்பிளி இன் கம்பேரபிள் யூ ஆர் சோ பியூட்டிஃபுல் லார்ட் யூ ஆர் சோ பியூட்டிஃபுல் பியாண்ட் டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் மேஜஸ்டி மேஜஸ்டி ஓ லார்ட் ஓ ஆண்டவரே ஈடற்றவர் இணையற்றவர் அருமையானவர் அழகானவர் உமை நாங்கள் ஆராதிக்கிறோம் உமையே நாங்கள் போற்றுகிறோம் we worship you for all glory honor and praises are due only unto thee we worship you lord there is none like you no one else can touch my heart like you do i can search for all eternity lord and find there is none like you let's worship him i will We thank you, Lord, for this privilege you have given us to worship you this evening. Lord, we pray that you will continuously speak and minister to us through your living word. Our lives will be blessed. We will be blessed by your living word. 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 Lord, that you may increase and that we may decrease. In Jesus Christ's name, we ask and we pray. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, I'm super excited to bring the word of God to Nusa Cent- the Tabernacle of Christ, Nusa Central, Johor Bahru, Malaysia. I'm so glad that I have an opportunity to preach in Pastor Sylvester's church. I've known Pastor Sylvester for many, many years, I should say. To be precise, I was 21 years old when I came to Malaysia for the very first time. I'm 33 now, maybe 34, I'm not sure, from somewhere there, okay? And... Uh, that's where that's where my journey began in Malaysia and uh, Pastor Sylvester I should say Pastor Sylvester has been a great friend ever since then I was brought into Malaysia by Pastor GM Mamutu Pastor GM Mamutu was my sponsor when I was in Bible college he helped me pay my my fees in Bible college um I should say to some extent he was uh, he has a done a lot for me to be who I am today I truly want to contribute that I truly want to give that I truly want to give that recognition uh, to what he has done to me in my life uh, over the period, over the years, especially um, my early times of my ministry. He was a very significant uh, person behind me of who I am today. And I thank God. I thank God for that man of God in my life. And he brought me to Malaysia. This was my first year Bible college um, internship. And um, I wanted to go somewhere out of India. And I've been praying about it. And Malaysia was my very first country. Sorry, Nepal. Nepal was my first country and Malaysia was my second country to get out of India that's the first time i should say young first time i'm seeing i'm seeing something so big Malaysia was pretty pretty big for me when i when i put my foot down there and the first pastor who received me was pastor Ezekiel Goindrajan he was a pastor in uh, Jarai uh, on the border of Thailand uh, i should say he was such a great father to me and from him i came to Ipo Buntong that's where pastor uh, pastor Sylvester was uh, was stationed at that time and pastor Lawrence Diraviam was the was uh, was the head pastor the lead and then there was pastor Rajan uh, from Ipo so um pastor pastor Lawrence gave me an opportunity to preach in one of their uh, one of their um one of their branch churches i should say an outreach the methodists they call it outreach one of their outreach churches and i stayed with uh, 
Retnam families. I I want to recollect those memories. I don't want to. I don't want to bypass anybody here. I truly want to. I'm thankful to God for this opportunity to preach in Malaysia. Every time I come to Malaysia, I think about all of those people who made a way for me to be in Malaysia today. It was Retnam families who gave me that opportunity to be there, and I stayed with them. And Pastor Lawrence gave me the opportunity to preach. Pastor Sylvester came to. Uh, to inspect me, in other words, uh, to to monitor me, to 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 make sure whether I'm still preaching from the word. I'm preaching my own story. <laughs> yep, yep. Pastor Sylvester was the police who came to see me. How I'm gonna do? But ever since then, we became friends. We become friends when I was 21. Now I'm 33 or 34. I don't know. As I said, I don't want to sit and calculate. I would have forgotten how old I am by now. But uh, he helped me. And we have, we have come a long way. That's our friendship. And I thank God that after so many years knowing one another for so well, He's given me this opportunity to preach in your church. And I count it as a joy, a pure joy to preach again. I also bring greetings to Pastor C. Paul, the lead pastor of um, the head pastor of the, the the Tabernacle of Christ organization. Let's quickly run into the Word of God. I've been meditating on 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 mighty men from the Bible because sometimes what you meditate is what you become. Because I want to be a mighty man of God. I want to be. I want to be a power-packed man. I want to be a man full of anointing, full of fire, full of zeal. I want to do some significant things for God. So to me, I always choose. I, I always choose people like that from Bible, so I can sit and meditate and and go more and and grow more, know more and grow more uh, in becoming. Uh, you know the, those those heroes of faith. So in one such way, I started uh, reading about Benaniah. This guy, this guy, this guy, uh, this guy has slayed a, a lion. Uh, I started reading about l people who have killed lions in the Bible. Uh, starting from Samson, it all started, began there with Samson. I started reading about Samson and then somehow I came to him. But here's a very relevant subject to the church right now. Your church is, is celebrating its first year anniversary. I want to first congratulate you for coming all this way. It's not easy to, to be there for a one year anniversary. One year is a lot for a beginning to a church. If a church has come to one year, I should say you guys have done great. Because many churches shut down before that one year. They couldn't withstand it. They couldn't take it. They, they fail. But you guys have come a long way. May God bless you, I say. And you guys have a long way to go. And here's something I saw about the life of David. The, the, when David became a king, he had peace in all his boundaries. One of the things that excites me is that it's not just David. David had some mighty men around him. It was not just him. He had a mighty army. He had three men who were so close to him, who were this immediate. And then he had 30 other men. So basically, I should say he had 33 mighty men in his life who were very significant, who helped him administrate, govern, reign. You can call it whatever it is. But he had a beautiful reign. And the golden rule of the time of the Israelites, they should always go back to say it's David's rule. So from that perspective, I see it's not just David. It was it was also those people who are with David. It was also those leaders who are with David. So I'm going to I'm going to meditate on one of those mighty men right now. Turn with me to Second Samuel chapter 23 verse 20. Second Samuel 23 verse 20. He is about a, a great man. This this is talking about a a great man called Benaniah. And talking about Benaniah, Benaniah was the lead, uh, was the head of. Um, of, of, of David's personal guard. He was the top guy of the personal guard. In, 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 let me talk in Malaysian term, right? The top guy. That's how the Malaysian stock. I got a little bit of Malaysian slang here and there with me. So I love to do that here and then and now I love to practice that. And Ben and I was, was also a man who was a very significant man. After the three important men for David, Ben and I's name is mentioned as the first man out of the 30 that's going to come. Anyway, Benaniah, son of Jehoiada, Jehoiada, I don't know, man, it's really tough. Jehoiada did and won among these three mighty men, won a name among. He, he became such a significant person that he was known among these three great men. He was honored than the 30. But David did not attain to the first, but, but he was not, a, but he did not attain to the first three, but he still does not come under the 30. He is above the 30, but below the first three. Look at his position, right? And he, David appointed him the head over all his personal guards. Powerful guy. 
there are a lot of lot of common things between david and him trust me if you want to be flying with the eagles you need to know and you need to discover your strength god has called you to fly high like an eagle scatters its nest i scatter your nest so that i can see you fly high like an eagle that's how god identifies you like david is now having so many men around him not everyone is weak. no not every one of them those people who stood around david were potential men and men who have done some significant deeds in their life now i tell you church you need to be there you need to be a person who will be seen among the kings seen among the princes and princesses where people will seek you after your anointing seek you after the great deeds you have done seek you after the great things you have accomplished for god and that's how i want to be in my life and that's why i meditate on subjects like this in my life anyway we're going to go quickly quickly into this subject about benaniah this 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 significant guy it talks about second samuel 23 verse 20 it talks about his father first It says Ben Benaya. I'm sorry man, it was not Benaya. I was wrong. It was Benaya. Is that right? Benaya. Yeah. Yeah. Tamil also it says Benaya. Benaya was a son of Jehoiada. Jehoiada. Man, it's really tough all the Bible names, right? The son of a valiant man from Kabzeel. I like that part. He is son of a warrior. That's that's the part. That's the part. He is a son of a warrior. Now it is so important to know the genealogy sometimes the bible does not hide that bible keeps talking about it you know that that kind of gives us an idea that kind of gives us a perspective man he has got his dad's dna he's got his dad you know his dad was a great guy and this guy was even greater i like that part i like that part many times we we go back to our parenting we go back to our parents we go back to our where we are from and we start relating with those failures those uh, diabetes you know relating with relating what sickness they had relating with what weakness they had how angry they were and how much i get the anger from my father or all the negatives all the positives but here is a positive side that is written about his father I started to meditate on that particular thing son of who he was a son of a valiant man he was a son of a mighty warrior now now that talks a lot about why he was able to accomplish some great things what did this guy benaya benaya do what 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 are his mighty deeds bible says that he was a mighty man he was a mighty man let me read it for you um second samuel 23 verse 20 benaya was son of zohaiada the son of a valiant man from kabzeel who had done many deeds I like that word in Tamil it goes like this who had done many mighty deeds he had killed two lion like heroes of Moab he had also gone down and killed a lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day wow you know i don't know you know about snow i live in a place where it's i mean the half of the year is full of snow so i can relate with it if it is snow i will not get out of my house i hate snow Yeah people I mean people out there in Asia where I'm from I'm from India we all say oh what a beautiful snow what a beautiful place no snow is not beautiful snow looks beautiful but when you start living in it no you don't want to go out on a snowy day you like to stay home on a snowy day but here's a guy going into a lion's den on a snowy day lion's den on a snowy day which means the lion is going to have advantage over him because lion has got claws it's got paws it's got four legs now it has got more friction than him because you people who have lived in snow will know how slippery snow is sometimes on a frozen day in a day that it freezes or the temperature goes down the roads are slicky the you know your driveway is slick now that means you don't have an advantage there now here is a guy who goes into the lion's den this is where i you know this is got got my attention because on snowy days i don't feel like doing anything but then when i read this i said to god god i want to be a mighty mighty man like him who gets out of his bed on a snowy day who gets out to the to the den of a lion to the pit itself and kills the lion third thing is 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 again it's very important verse 21 and he killed an egyptian a spectacular man a spectacular tackle a man in tamil it goes like this a man who was terrifying the moment you looked at him you were you were you were you were intimidated by his looks he was mighty he was strong he was tall what and what not he he who he was big spectacular man the egyptian had a spear in his hand so he went down to him with a staff wrestled 
wrestled wrestled the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. I love that. I love that part. I love that part. Look at the might that this man has had. Look at the courage. Look at, look at the power that he was having within him, that he was ready to do some significant things in his life. I should say that. I should say that. I, sh I should say, man, this guy is great. And when I read this part, I said to God, God, I want to be like him. And that's when I started meditating about him. Anyway, I want to take your attention to the first part of this verse. Who is his father? His father was a mighty man. Turn with me to the uh, Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. First thing you have to understand, when you receive the gospel, when you, when you receive Jesus Christ, you become his child. Now, who is your father? That's, that's the worst. That's the worst. That's the worst we need to focus right here. Because there are two verses that are so powerful right here. John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. goes like this. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name and what he did for them on the cross, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of the natural descent nor of human decision or a husband's will but born of God I want to remind you one more time you are born of God I want to remind you one more time you are born of God hey friends I want you 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 to hear this verse again you are a child of God not because of a natural descent, not because of a human decision, not because of a husband's will, but of the will of God. Because you're born of God. You're born of God's will. Hey, you got to understand this first thing. God has positioned you strategically for your advantage. He has, he has positioned you for a kingdom advancement. Every one of you, you're positioned by God. No enemy, no challenge that you're facing right now has the power to swallow you has the power to intimidate you, has the power to, to, to terrify you. Which in other words means everything that is coming against you is going to work for you because you got the power of God inside of you. You got the anointing. You got the call. You got the courage. You got the identity. You have the authority. You are a child of God. Man, that's where Benaiah's story begins. Yes, he's a mighty man, man, but he's got a mighty DNA. Wow, 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 wow. I'm excited. I want to say this to you. I've got a mighty DNA because you're born of God. That many times I felt very terrible in my life. I blame my DNA. I used to say this, ah, this is in me. This is this is this has passed on to me over generations. This has passed on to me like this. And then God started reminding me of son. I want you to get out of this mentality. You're born of God. You're born of God. Church, this is the first thing. Because we don't want victim mentality people in the church. The, one of the things that makes the church weak today is not the demonic powers or the peoples or, or the gates of hell. Because the Bible says the gates of hell cannot, cannot come against the church. In other words, which means most of the time, you know, what ruins the church is the mentalities. It's the mindset that has to change. The, the, the minds that are not transformed. The minds that has not come out of the victim mentality or to a sonship mentality. Because the moment you move from a victim mentality to a sonship mentality, you become so secured in the love of God. You become very anchored in your identity in Christ. Now, you're not fighting for an identity in church. You're not fighting for a position. You are actually looking for an opportunity to serve. You no longer look for the greatest position in the church. Or you no longer want to do something bad to your brother just to look good. Because you know who you are in Christ. Because you know what you are made of. You know you are born of God. You know your identity. You have nothing to prove. You have nothing to fight for. The only thing that you know is you're going you're gonna to move and do great things for the position that God has already given you. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And here's the thing. You are born of God. Church, I want to remind you one more time. You are born of God. One more time I want to say this to you. I would like to say this again and again because the greatest teaching the church needs today is the sonship. Who are we in Christ? This identity produces authority because the moment you start understanding this identity, the moment you know, oh wow, 
wow, this is the seed I carry. This is the anointing I carry. This is the identity I carry. Now you start approaching your challenges differently. You start approaching your situations differently. You start approaching people differently. You start approaching the society differently. You start approaching the community differently because there is this anointing inside of you. There is this power. That's what Bible says. Jesus says, if you have a faith of a mustard seed, he's not talking about a tree. He's not talking about a big plant. He's talking about seed because there's a potential inside of the seed. I want you to know God has put potential in your DNA. You are a new creation in Christ. You've got potential hidden inside of you. You've got potential inside of you. Hey, hey, I want to remind you again. Whatever the enemy is whispering in your ears, it's time that you shake it off and you say, hey, 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 I'm a child of God. If he has won the world and I'm going to win it, I'm going to win everything. I'm going to win every challenge that comes against me because I've got the power inside of me. Now, here's the thing. You need, to, you need to root yourself into it. The Bible clearly says that you become the partakers of the divine nature of God. It's in 1 John, I believe. It's in the, it's in the book of 1 John. Well, let, me, let me take it. Let me take it. I mean, we are not in a hurry. Yes, 1 John. 1 John chapter 1. That you become, you become the partakers of the divine nature of God. Wow, wow, wow. And that's where God has brought us. Hallelujah. You no longer have that old nature. Now you are in a new nature. You have the you become a partakers. You become a partakers of the divine nature of God. Guys, I want to remind you one more time right now. May God bless you. May God bless you. I want you to come out of any victim mentality. I want you to come out of the defeat mentality. I want you to come out of the fear mentality. Now, I don't know what's going to happen out of this COVID-19. I don't know what's going to happen out of this. What's going to happen to my job? You are never going to be a victim. God is going to turn every situation that is against you for you because you are a child of God. Now you need to work on your faith. Build yourself with the word of God. Build yourself with all the words that God is talking to you. Build yourself with the promises of God. Build your identity in Christ because that's where your strength lies. Because that's where you rise from. That's where you roar from. Come on, come on. Come on, one more time. I want to encourage you right now. Rise up and roar because that's where your strength is right now. Hallelujah. Okay, turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 20. 2 Samuel 23, verse 20. There are three mighty things this man does. One is that he's fighting against uh, uh, two men who are like lion. They are lion-like big men. They are, they are mighty warriors, known in Moab. Pretty famous people. Pretty great people. Now, he is defeating both of those mighty people. Whew, whew. This is this is the thing. Second Samuel 23, 20. He says like this, he had killed two lion-like heroes of Moab. He he also had gone down and killed a lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day. He killed an Egyptian, a spectacular looking man, who had a spear in his hand and he had a stick in his hand. Or oh, he had a he had a he had a rod, he had a he had, he had a wooden stick in his hand and he went and fought with him with the wooden stick he had in his hand. Now, what was the attitude of Benaiah? Benaiah, three things I see here is Benaiah was a man who never sat there and counted his odds. Many a times we have this natural mentality. We think it's smart to sit there and look at, oh, that's not going to work for me. Oh, that's not going to work for me. Many a times the odds, we only sit and look at all the odds that, that will not work for us. We'll sit there and we'll say, oh, I won't, I won't even try for this job because there are many people who are smarter than me. I'm not even going to give a try for this because I think there are big sharks in the business who can swallow me here. I'm not going to even do this. See, see, the problem is we always see everyone else is big and everything that is against us is big. But you got to understand the one who's in you is bigger than the one who's outside of you. The one who's in you is greater than the one that you're facing right now. God dwells in you. But I knew that very well. He was a man who had the courage. There are two against one. Many times in Tamil we used to say, what they got there, which means uh, one against one. I don't want to fight against two people. Now here's the deal. There was a time in the life of Abraham. Three different kings from three different directions came to defeat him. And all these three, three kings don't like each other. There are times you got to understand something. When you become famous in your life, when you become famous in your life, Many, when you become popular in your life, when you become blessed in your life, many people who don't like each other will come against you. That's not my words. These are words of T.D. Jakes. 
I was listening to him a couple of years ago when he was talking about it, like how people will come against you when you get blessed. And here's, here's many people coming from many different directions to attack him, to criticize him, to condemn him, to fight him, to pull him down, to tear him apart. But here's where you got to understand. The one who's inside of me is greater than the one that I'm facing right now. He's much bigger. Benaya knew this very well. Benaya knew this very well. Wow, wow, wow. And that's why Benaya was able to face two against one. Gideon is saying this word, God, there are too many men out there. I don't know whether I can defeat them. God said you will defeat them like you defeat one man. Yeah, there are many times numbers could be intimidating. In my life, I can say when I moved to America, numbers was intimidating. And in Indian rupee to against the American money, is, it's not easy. When I came to live here in this country, it was intimidating. My faith was tested. I was afraid. Numbers are sometimes intimidating. Sometimes in ministry, you want to do something. Sometimes to do something for your child. Sometimes you want to buy a bigger home. You want to do something. Now the numbers are playing with you. And it's intimidating you. And it's giving you fear. Let me remind you one more time. The one who's in you is greater than everything that you're facing right now. And God is more powerful than that. The second thing is he went into a snowy pit where the lion has more advantage, but he was ready to face it. I tell you, church, we need such warriors of faith who will rise up to face the crisis, who will not sit there and say, oh, let me wait for the right moment. God said when the Jordan was, was overflowing, God said, put your feet down. Many times we are not ready to wet our feet. We want to just stand on the dry ground and say, God, can you change everything for me? God is like, put your feet down. Put your feet on the Jordan. Take a step of faith. Get out there. There are many times when I started traveling as a traveling minister. I pray to God for many big doors, but sometimes God has made me do this. He said, buy a ticket. Start investing into that nation. You know, there are many times I've sowed into a nation even before going there. I took a risk seed, a big risk I've given sometimes. I've, I've given out all there are times in my life into a country, into a person in that country. God gives me opportunity like that. Even this time when the COVID corona situation was happening and God brought me, um, you know, to, to in connection with a man in Paris who was going to lose his home and was in a crisis. And God told me, now I want you to sow into this man because that way you're sowing into a nation. I want you to help this man. Look at this. Look at this. You got to take some risks in your life to conquer that ground. You got to sow to reap. You got to move into that level of faith. Like you will step into some odds without any fear. And you will, you will be ready to take some risks with God. My church, I want to say this to you. The church has to be not the safest heaven. The church has to be the place where they rise up and take some risks. Because Jesus took risks. Esther took risk. David took risk. Every hero of faith took risk. If you don't take risk, I tell you what, your anointing doesn't increase without risks. Anointing increases with risk. The more we take risks for God, our anointing keeps increasing. Sometimes you got to step into that realm of faith and say, God, even though situation does not seem in favor to me, but I'm going to step out there and I'm going to see something happen in the spirit realm. I want to get out there and do something for God. I want to do some mighty deeds for God. By the power he's already given me. You know, Jesus was talking about this, uh, the story of this uh, mighty man, uh, the rich man, the rich ruler who's going to go out of the city, but he gave his money to different people. And he said, do my business until I come. There are many times you forget that. God's got a business for us. And God has given us talents. God has given us influence. God has given us power. God has given us money. Hey, hey, no one is poor. No one is poor. Every one of us carries something. Every one of us have some potential inside of us. It is time we wake up to that. It is time we identify that. It is time we look into that and say, God, I want to be on your business before you come. When you come back, I want to be that guy who has multiplied what you have given in my hand. 
I tell you something, God is interested in your increase. I repeat again, God is interested in your increase in every area, soul, spirit, and body, not just the numbers in the church. Every one of the member of the church, every person in the church shall be blessed right now. I prophesy this. I pray this over you, that every one of you in, in uh, who's listening to this message right now shall be blessed. May you increase, I pray in every way that you'll have the courage to take some risks and so you'll have the courage to take some risk and invest into business that god is showing you you'll have the courage to invest into those you know against those arts that are intimidating you third thing he went against this man a spectacular man in tamil it goes like this which means he was a terrifying man. The moment you saw him, you were intimidated. He was, he was a big figure. He was huge. He was terrifying. Maybe he had a few scars on his face. What you see could sometimes intimidate you. That's where you need the identity. That's where you need to know who you are. That you don't see everything outside of you before seeing who's inside of you. You, you start seeing who's inside of you. That's why you need to start your day like that. You need to start your day with your identity, your sonship. That's when you can face the day with that courage and, cl with the, with that courage and clarity that you will win and you will have a victorious living. He's going against a man who's bigger than him, huge, and this man had a spear. Here's Benaiah having just a stick in his hand. There are many times we would wait. Oh, I don't have a spear in my hand. Oh, I don't have the resources in my hand. Oh, I don't have the connections that I need. Oh, I don't have any favor. I don't know anybody here. Now you got to stop giving such excuses. You need to start with what you have in your hand. Maybe sometimes it's just a stick. God looked at Moses right before splitting the Red Sea. He said, Moses, what do you have in your hand? Oh, God, I've got a stick, but I don't think so. My stick can make a difference against the Red Sea. Got to just raise what you have in your hand. Yes. First, celebrate what you have in your hand. You're not a victim. God has gifted you. God has anointed you. God has called you. You will defeat some mighty men. You will do some mighty deeds for God. Stop. Comparing yourself with your problem. Start comparing your problems with the one within you. Start counting the odds. Look at the odds and say, against all odds, I'm going to believe like Abraham believed. Against all odds. Third thing, whoever is against you, whatever is against you, maybe it looks spectacular, maybe it looks big and huge. Don't be intimidated. Do not be intimidated. Because what you carry has more power than what you're seeing right now. You are bigger than the giants that you're seeing right now. There is a giant in you who's huge, who's big, who's bigger than everything else. The one, the God in you is bigger than everything around you. I want to remind you one more time. May 12th, 13th and 14th, the next three days, sorry, including today, the next two days, we're going to be meditating on faith to do some incredible things for God. Let me pray with you right now. If you have friends who have to listen to this message, please share this message with them. Please give this message to friends. Please share this light as many as people you can because there are many out there who wants to hear a word of faith. Close your eyes with me. May God bless you right now. Lord, I pray right now, Lord. Whoever is listening to this message right now, stir their faith, Father. Stir them up. They are never going to be victims, Father. You call them for a victorious living. Because we don't want just pastor and members. We want some mighty men in our congregation. We want leaders who are going to go on and reign and administrate this expanding vision and ministry that you have given Pastor Sylvester. This church is going to grow in its proportion in many folds, Father. I pray that you will raise leaders in this season. Leaders who will take charge, leaders who will have courage, leaders who will face, leaders who will put their feet into the Jordan and see it split. Daddy, I pray right now, you're with them. Help them open their eyes to see that they are the sons of the living God. May God bless you. We pray this. Daddy, I pray right now, every hurting soul, 
every broken soul, every fear and uncertainty shall be broken in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Daddy, we pray right now. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 May God bless you, my friends. May God bless you. Don't forget the next two days is going to be percepts over percepts. We're going to keep building on it. And it's going to get better, exciting, encouraging, empowering, energetic. It's going to be fire-filled. May God bless you.